Hello, my name is Eric Langhorst. I'm a Google Certified Teacher from Liberty, Missouri. And tonight I wanted to show you a slightly different way to use images in Google Drive and allow your students and yourself as a teacher to add annotations to an image. So I'm going to open up my Google Drive and I have an image that I want to uh, demonstrate with today. It's a Boston Massacre engraving. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to open with Google Drive Viewer. And so you're going to see the famous engraving from Paul Revere of the Boston Massacre. And every year in my 8th grade American History class, we analyze this photo. We talk about different parts of it. So for me, this would be a perfect illustration of what I could do with an image in Google Drive and have students annotate. So first of all, um, I have this image loaded here, and uh, it's a little bit small. So I have a couple options if I go to View. One of the things that I can do is I can show it in full, resol uh, full resolution. And so that makes it a little bit bigger, and I can move it around with my uh, pointer tool. Um, I like to use the Image Navigator, though. So when I click on Show Image Navigator, I can still move around the image. But as you can see down here on the bottom, it's also going to show me where I'm at in the image. And then down here, I have a sliding tool if I want to make it smaller or larger. So I like to have that on the bottom so I can kind of tell where I'm at in an image, especially if you get one that's really, really big. So let me show you what um, you can possibly do with this with your students. I could assign this to a group of students or individual students and say, I would like you to try and point out as many things from the image as possible to try and describe what is happening. So uh, we talk about this as a really a propaganda tool by the Sons of Liberty. So there's little things in this image that I would hope the students would kind of point out and talk about. So for example, one thing above the image here, it says Butcher's Hall. So if I wanted to leave a comment about that, I could go to the Insert Comment button, and then I can select the part that I want to comment on. And then over here on the side, I could put uh, Named Butcher's, Butcher's Hall. Is that on purpose? Okay, and then I could leave a comment there. All right, so then maybe I could come down here, and one thing we talk about is the type of clothes that the colonists have here and how that might have been a sign of wealth, that these weren't exactly like dock workers that were just kind of hanging around. So I could click on a couple of these individuals and then leave a comment. Um, type of clothes. And then uh, I'll put uh, display of wealth. Okay. So I'm leaving comments here. Um, if I was a student and I was leaving these comments, a teacher could then come into this document and they could answer. Or maybe you could have a group of four or five students working on one image. And then you would have a series of different comments about parts. You could have different students um, highlight different parts of the image. So you could do quite a bit with this. And then um, as, a, as a teacher, I could come in and then I could reply to the comment. So if I wanted to click in a little response here, like, hey, that's a great observation. Um, there actually wasn't a place at that location called Butcher's Hall. So yes, it probably was Paul Revere's attempt to kind of get another extra little dig in on the British troops. So I could go ahead and comment on that. I could also resolve it. So if I wanted to, I could resolve those issues. Um, and I could come back, and if I do that with the other one as well, maybe I resolve this one. Just remember, you can always go to the comments part up here, and you'll be able to see all the different comments, even if they're not showing. And then you can go ahead and reopen those if you wanted to reopen those on the image. So um, kind of a cool way to kind of make different annotations on an image. As a history teacher, I would use this for a variety of different uh, photographs or paintings, possibly some maps. Um, you could do it with some primary documents as well. I'm thinking of some things from the Library of Congress, um, the letter that um, FDR or after FDR's passing that Truman got talking about, hey, we need to talk, um, the Stinson letter, uh, kind of describing that they needed to tell him about the work on the atomic bomb. So in that particular image, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you could point out, little things that have been scribbled on it and little notes and stuff. So that'd be something that students could annotate as well. Um, I was thinking about this today a little bit, and I also thought of a math teacher. If you had a, a problem and maybe you gave it to your students, you took a picture of it, you put it on Drive, and you said, could you please point out where 
the person made an error in trying to solve this particular problem. So um, you could do that in math. Uh, for science, you could diagram parts of a cell or uh, you know parts of a flower if you were talking about that in botany class, things like that. So um, I think there's a lot of potential here. It is in Google Drive, so you can make it accessible to just certain individuals. Um, you can you know assign it to just one student. You have the same way to establish uh, different rights and access points as you would with anything that you would have in a Google Drive document or image. So just kind of an interesting way. Hopefully uh, maybe that works for some of you. Um, if you have any comments, go ahead and leave them on the bottom of this YouTube page. But just kind of an interesting way to use images in Google Drive as far as leaving annotations that maybe you haven't thought of before. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.